The Nova Air C, or Nova Air Color, is utilizing the very latest Kaleido Plus screen with E-Ink's patented on-cell technology, which features a thinner screen stack and a 30% increase in contrast. We expected nothing less from Onyx, but yes, this unit is fully loaded with Android 11, stereo speakers, a touch and Wacom layer, USB-C, and Google Play. The body has also been completely redesigned from the ground up, sharing no shells with any other unit in their lineup. So let's dive into this miraculous beast, starting with the pen. Yes, the pen is actually an all-new color never before released. It features a shorter body than the Air 1 pen, similar structure to the Air 2 pen, but with an all-new color scheme featuring a blackish-green paint job with contrasting light grey magnet snap mark and book's logo. They also did not continue with their triangular conical air tips and instead went with the graphite blend. For the most part, the home screen is relatively unchanged from previous versions of these units. You have all of your information in the middle of things you've most recently read, most recently sideloaded. Everything on the side is going to remain constant, so your store, your notes, your storage, which is your device storage. You only get 21 gigs out of the 32 with only a few pieces of file software on there. So unfortunately, a third is dedicated to the overall operating system and firmware and everything in the back end that we don't see. You also have some apps which are looking mighty fine. They're looking very vibrant. Everything on this because of the new technology is very vibrant and it's popping and the contrast is better. Everything just naturally looks better to the eye. Colors are also more lush as well and aren't quite as drowned out. In your settings you get a bunch of different things including system display which we don't always touch on a lot. There's a lot of things here like full refresh frequency, five taps, etc. System font size where you can go over the entire system's font size and you can click here to show what home page you want. Either you can have your home page on the library store, notes, etc. Things that are basically on the side and you can long press to sort them around. The pesky but very usable floating ball is always there. You can turn it off, but it does have a lot of interesting features like back, home, and things that you don't have to always remember gestures for. You can even turn the device off from the floating ball. Swiping the top down, you have more options than ever, really. You have your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you have Rotate, you also have disabled touchscreen throughout the entire unit, except for that icon. You have your glow light, you have your audio, and we have the e-ink center, which is device-wide. These dark color enhancements and vividness enhancements are going to be throughout the entire unit regardless of what you are using. You have to be careful with this because as you use individual things like manga, PDFs, etc., they're also going to have their own enhancement with colors and contrasts. We also have the modes down here which we will show you when we get into a video and they have dropped X mode and haven't had X mode since the Poke 2 color unfortunately. You can sideload in any e-reading app you'd like, Moon Plus Reader, Amazon Kindle, etc. But to be completely honest, the Neo Reader has come a long way. It's actually quite nice. It wasn't nice a couple generations ago, but things have since refined themselves. You have Wikipedia search, net search, copy, take notes, underline, highlight. You can even use TTS, which we'll show you at the end of this segment. Page turns are very quick, and I must say, Color E-Ink has always had a problem with contrast in the background. It's always tried to utilize colors to create white. Browns and blues and grays, they all mix together to try to present you with a white slash stone background. This is just about as good as we've ever seen it. Maybe a couple steps above the ink pad color by Pocketbook because this does have a Wacom layer and a flush screen and bezel layer. So this one is performing quite nicely in the grand scheme of things. E-Ink is still in its infancy when it comes to color. Collectively, it's only been around for a couple years compared to E-Ink being around for nearly two decades. So there are still some kinks they have to work out, but it is quite nice to look at on this most recent generation. Thinking that the explanation might lie here. He knew these men. Also, perfectly. They were men of business, very wealthy, and of great importance. 
Alternatively, if you don't like the Neo Reader, you can use the Amazon Kindle app, in which case it's going to have all the page turn animations and the color splashes of the book cover art and all that fun stuff. You can also click on the middle. You can go back to your Amazon Kindle experience and go ahead and search Kindle without actually having to utilize things that are preloaded. You can utilize the app as is. I'll give you a tip. If you're using this device for PDFs, it's fine. If you're using this device for PDFs that relies on your job, your livelihood, or your education, I wouldn't recommend it. It is a little bit small and it does not fit a page of 8.5 by 11 or A4 or letter size piece of paper. It just does not. This is a very small screen in the grand scheme of things. You'll see how small it is. It is not a 10.3, it's not a 13.3. So there are some shortcomings when it comes to overall visibility on this in terms of it having to be scaled down. However, you can take notes right away. Pinch and zoom is fantastic. The colors are as good as they've ever been. And it's very it's a very fast experience. It's a very robust experience. There's no crashes or anything like that. You can pinch and zoom like this. You get a color mini map of where you are on the screen. You can then make your notes with your Wacom pen back on out to a different scale. Your notes that you've taken will go alongside that. It's all relative. And you can make thicker notes like that. This is a very, very good PDF experience. And it doesn't stop there because like we said with the books this is running Android it has a package installer it has Google Play you can install any PDF editing app you wish while large screen required PDFs might not be that great on the flip side manga is quite nice reason being manga in Japan is around the six to seven inch screen size or book size we should say so this falls perfectly in line with that and it is a very nice experience everything is very robust the colors are very nice the contrast is beautiful you do get a little bit of an a2 mode without even being an a2 mode when you're pinching and zooming when you let go it goes into the full experience this is fantastic looking probably one of the best flush screen and bezel color experiences we've ever seen this is a very very good looking unit everything is quick everything is fast you don't have to wait for anything to load you get mini maps to assist you along the way zoom levels it's a great experience this is where you're going to be spending a lot of time on this unit. This is note taking and it is Wacom after all. You don't have to use the included pen. We say this almost every Wacom related episode. You can use any pen on the market for the most part. These guys have included something very special in that they give you 16 colors. That is an astronomical amount of colors. The only device that gives you more colors is the Reinkstone and Top Joy, and they don't even count. This is a very widespread amount of colors. You have everything on the left here, including layers. Layers is very nice because you can add a ton of different layers up to five, including the template layer for a total of six. And why layers is important is because if we write on the screen and then we go to a different layer and try to erase it, it actually won't erase because you're not on the right layer. Thus, if you have multiple layers of things for your schematics, you won't be affecting anything underneath each respective layer. Onyx is also the only device on the market to allow you to customize and save pens. For example, you can add pens to the top. I want this one to be a green marker, full size. I want my next one to be a pink pencil, mid-size. I want one more to be a brush in black, low size. And they're all toggleable, which means I can have my brush, I can go over to my pink pencil, I can go over to my green marker, and then back to my paintbrush all within a click of just toggling between each one and it is lightning quick. There's a ton of different erasers as well. Mobile eraser, five different size, stroke eraser, area eraser, erase all layers and the current layer. You can choose area eraser like this, choose a certain area and it immediately deletes that area. They also take it a step further and give you shapes. Shapes is very nice, so you can do triangles for example, but you can't only just do triangles, you can change the width of it and you can change the way in which you draw the triangle. You can do this kind of Morse code little dots, you can do staggered dots, you can make trapezoids, rhombuses, basically anything instantly and it's so very very fast. 
Onyx also allows you to extend your canvas. You can do a one by one panel, one by two, etc. So if we go two by one width, we can now go left and right and expand our canvas. The lasso tool is very useful. For example, if I draw something that took me quite a bit of time, something very intricate that I don't want to really mess up, I can grab my lasso tool, I can circle that, and I've now grabbed that thing I've just written. I can stretch it, I can stamp it, I can rotate it, I can even copy it and put it on another page just like that. And now I've saved exactly what I've written or drawn anywhere I want on any page. Onyx gives you a few ways to change text. So you can click AI and what it's going to do is original recognition where it's going to just convert it exactly where it was on the page like that. Or you can go back and you can choose reflow recognition in which case it's going to gather everything on the screen and put it on the top left corner right there. And you can actually use voice dictation as well. I am going to continue writing using nothing but my voice. There's a lot more stuff if you click the three dots as well. There's full refresh, which refreshes everything. You can delete current page, save, export, undo, share with apps on the device itself, insert images, recording. There's so much stuff to this unit that it's one of the most fully loaded experiences on the market. We want to touch on the colors now, because as you see, if you have multiple colors on the screen and you choose something like a light blue and you draw over all that, it's not going to mix, it's not going to blur, it's not going to be all sloppy like a DES screen. E-Ink is a very high quality experience in that all the colors are going to be in their own respective isolated zones. And this level of vibrancy and contrast only comes with the most latest technology from E-Ink. But the colors are absolutely perfect. This is as good as you're going to get color E-Ink currently. Utilizing OneNote, if we choose a pen and we start drawing on the page, that is more impressive than you might think because no other sketch app and no other device will ever be as fast as this in OneNote. And why that is is because they have actually catered this specific app to work with this specific unit so that the latency falls in line with how fast it should be. If you use other apps like Sketch or Paint or something, you're going to draw a line and then maybe a second later that line will show up. This is a true OneNote experience. Glow lights stopped being an issue back in, say, 2015 with the consistencies. Glow lights have pretty much become industry standard and they're good now. And that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the actual colors here today. The quality of these colors are so nice and they just pop. It's fantastic. You can also have different levels of glow light. If we go to the top here, we can turn the blue down, we can turn the orange down, we can turn the orange up, and a combination of everything. There are only three manufacturers that use Google Play, and that is Dasung, Boyu slash MeBook, and Onyx. Onyx probably does it the best. It is very, very nice. It's very smooth. There's very little limitations because this does have Android 11 and a color screen. It is probably the best Google Play experience we can expect on an e-reader to date and obviously all of this just gets faster if we go into the e-ink center and go to a faster mode like a2 mode now we're really running through the pages like this you can go ahead and click on something it immediately pops up you get all your carousels you get all the information down below reviews this is a very high quality level experience and it's almost surprising that this isn't lcd led the Nova Air C has everything. The latest possible version of Android on ePaper, some of the lowest pen latency found on devices today. 
and even a 3-pin copper contact to connect different peripherals, like cases. Outside of Big Me, color hasn't really been touched in the past 12 months. So this unit is being strategically released at a very crucial time in Color E-Ink's timeline. The sky's the limit for this 7.8 inch, and this just goes to show you that Onyx is king at what they do. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.